Wouldn't it be cool to have a pack of wolves that could instantly destroy any noob that you target? Well, that's exactly what you can do in Wrath of the Lich King as Enhance. But you need to know how to set up your character, which is what we'll be doing today as we will be covering all of the essentials. So stay tuned in this starter course to know exactly how to build your Enhancement Shaman in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. As a Horde player, Orc will be the most beneficial race by far. Gaining stun reduction is excellent against most classes in the game. You also gain a small attack power buff, useful when using your big offensive cooldowns. Last of all, you gain 5% more damage with pets. This works with your Spirit Wolves, solidifying Orc as the best choice on Horde. As for Alliance, you can only be a Draenei, which is less preferable than Orc. You do gain 1% hit, which can be nice to get closer to the hit cap, as well as a small chance for Shadow Spells to miss when used against you. Having the Gift of the Nauru heal can also be quite helpful in dire situations where you're taking too much damage. Since it is a holy spell, it can be used even when locked on nature. Now it's time to look at your talents, so let's quickly cover your best build and go over some key abilities. There is mainly one build to follow which should look like this, having 54 talent points into the enhancement tree with the rest going into elemental. So let's highlight the main talents that you should be wary of. First off, Feral Spirit is the bread and butter for Enhancement Shamans. There is no situation where you would want to play without this. It's your biggest burst cooldown, dealing a ton of damage when your wolves are active. It also increases the healing you take, which makes it difficult for you to be a kill target during this time. Your wolves also give you access to Bash and Spirit Walk, adding to your utility. Bash will be nice to use on your kill target, and Spirit Walk is excellent to use for mobility. Again, you gain so much with this single talent that it is impossible to play without. Moving on, you may be familiar with Maelstrom Weapon if you play on retail, and it's pretty much the same on Wrath, but even stronger. It allows you to use instant cast spells when you have 5 stacks, which works on a bunch of different abilities, and even on your Hex. Most of the time you'll use this for your instant heals or Hex depending on the situation. You could even use it on a Lightning Bolt if the damage could be enough to take someone down or force a defensive cooldown. Picking up Shamanistic Rage is vital as it's your strongest and most reliable defensive. It gives you big damage reduction on a 1 minute cooldown that can even be used in stuns. You also gain mana with your melee attacks during its uptime. Enhancement Shamans are reliant on mana to keep functioning in any arena game, and without active mana regen, you'll become useless, so it's important to get as much mana back from this cooldown when it's up. Another important talent is Earthen Power, which strengthens your Earthbind Totem to remove snares from your party. This can be excellent against heavy snare classes such as mages, removing all their annoying slows, allowing you to connect more often. It also works on undispellable snares such as hamstring, so this talent will be useful against any composition for boosting your mobility. Along those lines, Frozen Power is also a strong talent. You don't take this talent for the damage, but more so for its crowd control. Being able to frost shock enemies that are far away from you will root them for 5 seconds, and this can make catching up to them a bit easier. It's important to note that mobility is relatively limited in Wrath, so having any means to close gaps is really valuable. Moving away from the enhancement tree, one of the main reasons you go into elemental is to pick up reverberation. Having your wind shear become a 5 second cooldown is definitely strong as it makes you incredibly disruptive. Having a shorter cooldown on interrupts opens up more opportunities to land kills or even stop damage. You'll also pick up Elemental Focus which gives you clear casting states for your healing or damage spells. As you know by now, Shaman's mana is a big concern, so having clear casting procs helps cover that weakness. Next up, having the right glyphs will add to the strength of your toolkit, so let's break it down. The three major glyphs you'll be using nearly all the time are Glyph of Feral Spirit, Shocking, and Stoneclaw Totem. Feral Spirit will be your most impactful one that you should use all the time. It adds a ton of pressure to your Spirit Wolves, which is your main win condition as an Enhancement Shaman. Most of your games will be won during this cooldown, so having them buffed will be essential in any arena game. Stoneclaw Totem is another mandatory glyph, but for your survivability. It gives you around a 4k shield, which is great to use when taking heavy pressure. It will also make the other totems gain the shield, making them more difficult to kill. Your third glyph will usually be Glyph of Shocking. 
Shock abilities are used often, so having a reduced global cooldown for each one will make your gameplay more fluid. Just like retail, enhancement shamans are relatively GCD capped in Wrath, so having the extra globals will help you maximize both offensive and defensive spell usage. With that said, this glyph can be replaced with the glyph of Wind Fury weapon. Having the extra chance for more damage is always a welcome sight for enhancement shamans. Basically, it's a choice between having a faster global or a random chance of doing more damage. Since the glyph is quite RNG, we recommend Glyph of Shocking as the better overall pick. As for minor glyphs, you'll be taking Water Shield, Ghost Wolf, and Water Walking. The best glyph here is Water Shield as it's beneficial for your mana. Remember, without your mana bar, you are almost useless, so this just helps cover one of your biggest weaknesses. Glyph of Ghost Wolf can be helpful in the situations where you find yourself needing to kite often. It isn't too impactful in most cases, but it's better than the other minor glyph choices and it's simply free healing. Glyph of Water Walking isn't really useful at all, but again, there's no other real choice for your third slot in minor glyphs, and this one can be somewhat useful in BGs or world PvP. Next up is gear, and you might be wondering if you need to PvE, so let's answer your questions. First though, let's cover your stat priority. Since you're squishy, getting resilience will be your number one goal. Outside of shamanistic rage, enhancement shamans are relatively squishy, making resilience essential as a passive form of bulkiness. Next up, you want to get 5% hit rating so you don't miss any of your melee spells. Bear in mind that if you're a Draenei, you'll only need 4% due to the racial passive. You also gain 4% hit rating from the dual wield specialization talent, so this should be easy to achieve. Then you want to go for haste, as this is your best stat for DPS, partially because it makes your globals quicker. Remember that you are GCD capped on shaman, so having more GCDs from haste makes your gameplay much more fluid. Last of all, you'll prioritize critical strike, then armor penetration. Crit will be more valuable due to the nature of your damage. Since a lot of your damage comes from spells and not physical attacks, crit will outperform armor pen in most cases. Crit can also help with landing bigger heals, being good defensively as well. Now that you know your stat priority, it's time to look at the gear you need, starting off with your previous gearing. As you can see, most of your gear will be based on PvP items, picking up many savage and hateful gladiator pieces. This includes getting all the set bonuses and most of the offset items, which will significantly help with your resilience. One PvP piece is available with Winter Grasp, Marks of Honor being the Anvil of Titan's Trinket. You'll want to pick that up as soon as you obtain enough marks for it. Aside from that, the rest of your pieces will come from PvE instances. You'll pick up the weapons and ring from specific heroic dungeons. You can also get your totem slot from Emblems of Heroism, which you should prioritize with your dungeon badges. When it comes to your sockets, you'll simply ignore nearly all set bonuses in order to gain as much resilience as possible. That means stacking Mystic Autumn's glow gems in nearly every slot. The only socket where this changes is in your chest piece, having the enchanted tier to give you extra stats. More importantly though, this prismatic gem allows you to activate your meta socket, which should be Relentless Earth Siege Diamond. This gives you increased crit damage, helping with your burst pressure. If you want, you could also use the stun reduction meta gem instead, which is a better defensive option against the likes of rogues. Ideally, you'll have two helms with different meta gems to swap around, but if you have to choose between them, then Relentless Earth Siege is preferred. When it comes to your end of season best in slot gear, the story remains the same, as you'll be itemizing mostly through PvP. You'll want the deadly gladiator set pieces, as well as most of the off pieces, giving you more resilience and other favorable stats. Most of the other pieces will come from raiding, including your weapon, cloak, and neck pieces. Calamity's Grasp is a massive grail as it's better than all other weapons, giving you a huge boost in damage. The PvE ring can be found in the Eye of Eternity, but it's also bind on equip. This means that you can buy it from the auction house if you have enough gold. As for the Totem and Anvil of Titan's Trinket, these come from your pre bis gear and remain best in slot throughout the entirety of Season 5, so getting them early on will be in your best interest. You should follow the same gem priority and enchant as shown in this video, so feel free to pause to take notes. Next up, having the right professions will be an additional way to make sure you have the strongest loadout in Arena. By far the best and only mandatory profession is Jewel Crafting. This is because it gives you a ton of extra resilience from the Mystic Dragon's Eye gems. You gem full resilience as an enhancement shaman anyway, and this is one of the few ways to get an additional resilience boost. As for your next profession, it will be dependent on the Arena season. For Season 5 and 6, Engineering will be favored. You'll want the Rocket Gloves ideally as this gives you big damage for your burst windows. You're all about taking down enemies 
enemies quickly and rocket gloves are perfect for this because its damage is static and especially since it's off the GCD. However, when season 7 and 8 kicks in, blacksmithing will become stronger due to gaining epic gems. This allows you to get even more stats from your socket bonuses in your gloves and bracers. As such, you'll gain extra resilience and with access to other PvE items and higher stat pools in later seasons, blacksmithing will become even stronger. So the second profession is basically up to you, with engineering being better during the first two seasons and blacksmith gaining a small advantage during season 7 and 8. Rounding out your character's loadout, we have macros, which you might have some questions about. No worries, let's break it down. Enhancement Shamans are one of the classes that benefit the most from Arena 123 Command. This is due to having a few low cooldown abilities that can be used on any target at any time. Having Hex, Shear, Frost Shock, and Purge on Arena 123 Bindings will be ideal if you can get used to it, since it allows you to use these spells without needing to deselect your current target. If this is too jarring, then you should at least create focus macros for these abilities instead. This will be less ideal, but still help in order to land these spells without needing to switch targets. You will be using these abilities quite often in any arena game, so getting comfortable with these macros will be beneficial to you. Having party macros for your partners will also be helpful in order to cleanse or use heals. Just like before, you lose some globals while needing to manually target party members, so these macros make your gameplay more efficient and more fluid. You may also use party 123 macros as shown or use player name macros instead depending on your personal preference. Just remember to change the player names if you play with multiple arena partners. When you use Spirit Wolves, there will be a few bindings and macros you'll want in order to maximize their uptime. For starters, having a pet attack and pet follow macro will help control your wolves properly. These allow your wolves to attack your current target as well as pull them away from danger if they're about to die. You could also macro in your pet attack into damaging spells that you use often so they're always hitting your target. Finally, your wolves also grant additional spells that you'll want to bind and make macros for, being Bash and Spirit Walk. Bash will be used once in the duration of wolves, commonly on your kill target, in order to lock them down and deal a ton of pressure. Spirit Walk can be used twice during the duration of wolves, and can get you out of snares and root effects, as well as giving you increased movement speed. Both of these macros should be made so you can easily make use out of these spells when your wolves are active. Remember, spirit wolves are your win condition, so being efficient with them will increase the likelihood of you landing kills. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing Enhancement Shaman? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.